inflammatory bowel disease understand this the word boil just means all the way from your mouth straight to the anus so from the entry to the exit that is the boil we also call it the gut and then inflammatory which means an inflamed gut so inflammatory bowel disease is a disease which uh, occurs as an inflamed gut is that simple So inflammation has four things. One, there must be pain, there must be redness, there must be swelling, and there must be an increase in temperature. Those are the four cardinal signs of inflammation. So anytime I'm talking to you about inflammation, take your mind into that direction. Pain must be there, so therefore we feel abdominal pain. Do you see where the symptoms are coming from? Abdominal pain, inflammation. Now redness is there. That redness is when you do an endoscopy, you simply see that the wall of the intestine is totally inflamed and it looks like red. And we will see some of them look like clumps, hmm? like clumps hanging into the rectum and the, and the large intestines. So the redness is there because there is increased blood flow towards that uh, inflamed site so that we initiate the healing process. So immune cells, red blood cells are going there. Therefore, blood supply has to increase. And I always make it easier for you this way. When you hit your toe or maybe uh, a, a table, what do you feel? And then how do you feel after a day or so, or after two hours? You will see the toe swelling. But first you start by a lot of pain because the sensation of pain are there. So you will feel pain. After you felt pain, you will try to rub it. When you rub it, it starts to go red. And then it starts to swell. And then when you touch it, the temperature is a little higher than the, the, the other body temperature. Why? Because blood comes with uh, some heat. So blood is coming in with immune cells. Blood is coming in with red blood cells. Blood is coming in with nutrients so that this wound gets to heal. So inflammation is basically redness, pain, uh, swelling, and, uh, and uh, increase in temperature. So that is exactly what we see when you do an endoscopy or a colonoscopy when you have this condition. So IBD, now if you see, if you see the word IBD, it's a general term, but it has only two uh, conditions since I did. So this is the definition anyway. Chronic inflammatory condition affecting the gut. Simple. One, it has to be chronic. So it has to take a long period of time. Some of you will go ahead and treat IBD and yet it's actually colon cancer. And this is the problem. Every time we experience bloating, every time we experience, experience indigestion, every time we experience constipation, we are quick to go to the pharmacy to buy lactulose to empty the bowel. We are quick to go uh, and buy PPIs and antacids because we are thinking we are bloated so we have a lot of gas. We go and buy antacids or PPIs. We keep on masking symptoms of diseases, and by the time we are being diagnosed of a disease, it's already too late. Okay, I said this to people from Meru, people from uh, Marsabit, Moyale, Mandera, Wajia. These people who consume a lot of Mira. They take this Mira that has a lot of chemicals, they get gastritis, they go to the pharmacy, they buy Omeprazole, and they take it, and they feel better. It keeps on going that way all through, all through, and then... Six months down the line, they are still doing the same thing. They are given PPI, they are given uh, H. pylori kits. They get a little relief and they come back. And as they keep coming back, imagine somebody who has been on PPIs for like four years. They've always taken an antacid, they've always taken PPIs, but they still consume alcohol, they still chew Mira. So by the time you're coming for an adequate or appropriate uh, clinical diagnosis, you're at stage four of cancer. How can we even reverse that? How will you stay away from chemo? You can't. How will you stay away from radiation? It's difficult. But if you, you become so cautious about your body, I wonder why somebody will chew Mira the whole night, like literally, and then every single day. So chronic inflammatory condition affecting the gut, all the way from the mouth to the anus. Most of the times when you say IBD, people think this old, old always in the colon or the large intestines. That is not true. Listen to this. This IBD is actually classified into two. We have something called the Crohn's disease, and we have something called the ulcerative colitis. Pause and let's review. So one, we have IBD, the inflammatory bowel disease. But this IBD has to be classified because these are the types anyway. So it has to affect from the mouth all the way to the, to the rectum or the anus. But you will know that a part of this IBD affects only the large intestines. And the other part affects every place every single part of the gut from the mouth to the anus 
That's where the difference is. So it's two conditions combined into one to form IBD. Now listen. One type is what we call ulcerative colitis. If you're sharp, you already know. Ulcerative, ulcer. And then colitis, colonitis. Ulcerative, an ulcer, a wound. Colitis, colon. And then itis, inflammation of the colon. Period. You are a doctor. You are a gastroenterologist right now. Tushanzakwabadaktari. <laughs> So if you have these two conditions, of course, you will have to differentiate them to know which is which. And one that is confused for peptic ulcer disease is actually the one that is called the Crohn's disease. Because the Crohn's disease affects from the mouth all the way to the anus. Sometimes you will see you have an ulcer here, a, a small white patch, but it's very painful. Sometimes you're busy trying to clear your throat every morning. <clears throat> every morning. And it seems like you have a, a clogging mucus here. It's not going away. Sometimes you have very strong epigastric pains. And sometimes when you eat a meal, you start having a lot of pain in your gut. You're wondering what is happening. And these are the instructions that are coming from your gastro. You should eat all the time because you have ulcers. But what if we have this? Anyway, ulcers do not allow you to eat all the time. Please do not because you will affect the system anyway. If you have ulcers, time for you to start fasting. And this, you've seen ulcerative colitis. So part of IBD is an ulcer. But Crohn's disease, so we've said it's two, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. For the ulcerative colitis, it is specific to the colon because it's colitis. So it causes inflammation of the colon. So for you to know this, of course, after the symptoms, maybe you're going to the toilet and you're, you're, you're actually diarrheaing and it comes out with blood or your stool comes out with blood and it's fresh blood because the colon is just near the rectum. So it's actually extending, extending to the rectum. So basically... Any wound that is happening in the colon will come out, stool will come out with fresh blood. Okay? Unlike when you have a wound in the small intestines or in the stomach, the, uh, the stool comes out as dark because the blood has already clotted. But if it's in the, uh, in the large intestine, of course, we see uh, a bright red uh, a stool, uh, blood in stool. So the Crohn's disease is affecting from the mouth to the anus. Now listen to this. The beauty about the Crohn's disease is not a beauty, but this is how it, 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 it manifests. So you'll see patches of ulcers everywhere. You can see a patch in the, in, the, in the esophagus, you can see another patch in the stomach, you can see some few patches in the large intest intestines or even the small intestines. But you will see it specifically, these patches, you have a patch and then a clear surface, a patch and then a healthy surface or tissue. So it's actually uh, alternating between the, the deceased part and the healthy part. So you'll see those differences, those patches. But for the ulcerative colitis, you'll see a whole lining of the colon is inflamed. There is no patches. It's just a whole part of the colon that is inflamed. So whether it is the descending colon or whether it's the transverse colon, you will see it all looking red because of inflammation. I hope you've understood the difference between those two. That one has to run from the mouth to the anus with patches, but the other one affects the colon and it is a strip. You will see a whole colon side basically inflamed. Let me take you to the symptoms of, uh, of Crohn's disease. So this is what you guys should know. That if we have Crohn's disease, since it's running from the mouth all the way down, you will experience the same symptoms as somebody who has ulcers. The normal uh, peptic ulcer disease or duodenal ulcers. So some of the symptoms are these. Of course, diarrhea. But this diarrhea can come out bloody or sometimes not bloody. But I want you to know this. That for the Crohn's disease, if it affects the small intestines or the large intestines, the patches will be seen in the, in, the, in the final part of the small intestines and in the rectum. So it's very specific also. Just because it affects all parts of the system, from the mouth to the anus, it doesn't mean that there are places that will affect like mostly. But mostly, if you want to know the difference, this one affects the last part of the small intestines and the last part of the large intestines. So for you to know the difference, because this one you will see, where the small intestine is joining the large intestine, there is a patch, there is an ulcer. And then in the rectum, there is an ulcer. But all through, the intestines are okay. But for the other one, the ulcerative colitis, you will see, no small intestine is affected, but the large intestine, all of it is affected all the way. And you will see, it's not a patch, it's a, basically a strip all through. For those of you who already have an image of the large intestine in the head, when I'm doing this, you already know I'm saying the transverse colon and then the descending colon.
and then the rectum and the anus. So you already know that. Okay, pause and review. So these are the symptoms for Crohn's disease, the one that affects from mouth all the way to the, to the anus. One, diarrhea. And that diarrhea sometimes comes with blood. Why? If it's affecting the rectum, you will see the blood. If it's affecting the first part of the, uh, of, the, of the large intestines, which is the last part of the small intestines, you will see blood. And it has to be sometimes fresh blood, okay? But if it's affecting from the stomach upwards, you will not see the blood. You will see dark stool. Symptom number two, abdominal pain. And this one is very specific. On the right upper abdomen. Or sometimes on the right lower abdomen. Because when it's on the upper abdomen, you need to suspect the liver problem. But if it's on the right and lower abdomen, you simply suspect Crohn's disease. That's symptom number two. And these symptoms will guide us to the diagnosis. Number three, we have weight loss. So people lose weight so fast. Why are they losing weight? Any idea? Why do you think people who have these ulcers are losing weight? As I move on, fatigue and fever. Again, why do you think they're having fatigue and fever? Good answer there. Brian is saying people are losing weight because of diarrhea. That is true. Diarrhea can actually dehydrate you. That is one. You can actually lose electrolytes, which is basically fatal. That's why diarrhea is fatal. So therefore, anytime you're diarrheaing, make sure you rehydrate with water and salt. Before you seek any help, rehydrate with salt and water. Mm -hmm. uh, Gatim is saying they are not benefiting from the food they eat. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. Listen. You have an ulcer already, so your gut is totally messed up. Therefore, absorbing those nutrients, a good answer, Samuel, absorbing those nutrients is a problem. So therefore, you're going into malabsorption. So you cannot absorb vitamins. You cannot absorb amino acids. You cannot absorb even your carbohydrates that you're addicted to. So you're wasting time when you're eating because most of those nutrients are just going out with stool. Number four, of course, we said fatigue and fever. And fatigue is coming as a result of you bleeding again. When you're bleeding through that wound or that ulcer, what is happening is you're losing blood, you're losing iron, you get into anemia. People who have anemia start feeling fatigued, they start feeling mild headaches, they start feeling confusion, and sometimes they faint. So this is coming here again. As they lose blood, problems are coming in. Number five, fistula. Please understand a fistula is like a hole. So you see, you can have a hole inside the rectal uh, wall, the rectal wall, that mucosa, you have a hole that's actually popping out, literally. So you can have actually the stool or the content of the rectum filling into the abdomen. They just come out into the abdomen. For the ladies, you can end up uh, having infections of your vagina because the content of the rectum are actually fusing with the content of the vagina. Imagine that, having a hole that actually connects the rectum with the vaginal canal. Now you're either urinating urine that smells like feces or you get infections because the rectum or the large intestine is the one that harbors the most microorganisms. So when you just have a small connection, all the microorganisms are getting access to your uh, vaginal canal and that's a problem. Okay? And you see, that's why ladies are told to wipe from front to back. Because you don't want to wipe from back to front so that you can introduce the rectal microorganisms into the vagina. That's an infection and a serious one for that matter. This fistula now will cause you sepsis because of the infections that are coming in. And these infections can actually, these bacteria and these uh, microorganisms in the rectum can actually get access into the bloodstream and now you get sepsis. So now the, that is another complication. That we, as we'll be talking about complications of IBD, you will see uh, sepsis is part of the complications. Fistula is part of the complications. But again, fistula is a symptom. So when you have a fistula, we start suspecting, ah, would it be Crohn's disease or would it be uh, the other one, ulcerative colitis? And then, of course, uh, abscesses. So you get this pass in your stool, pass coming out. You start knowing, oh, this is a problem. So when you go for a stool test, we will see these things. You can see pass cells in the stool. You can see uh, uh, bacteria, a lot of bacteria in the stool. You can see blood in stool. And then you start suspecting, possibly this gentleman has an inflamed a gut. So you see the symptoms are very clear. There are things that you can actually look at and know. Okay, so you will see these things. Now, that is for the Crohn's disease. Let me take you uh, away further, uh, maybe a, a step higher. Because remember, this one is the one that is targeting from the mouth to the anus. An inflamed gut. Imagine all that gut being inflamed in form of patches. How much pain are you feeling already? 
Hmm? As a human being, how much pain are you feeling already? You can't swallow food. And even if you swallow that food, there'll be a reflux, there'll be that pain when the, the food is being uh, mixed so that we can get that check, that chyme so that you can actually act on uh, using the enzymes. And then after that, you start having a lot of problems because anytime you concentrate stomach acid, that wound is starting to burn. Somebody is asking, differentiate it from GE. GE is an inflamed gut, but it is acute. Remember this one we say it is chronic. Okay, yeah. Good, and GE has different causes. This one you will see also the causes are totally different from GE. But anyway, move softly. The other one is ulcerative colitis, and the location is, of course, we say the colon and the rectum. And then, we say this one, the inflammation is limited to the innermost lining of the colon. Now, this one can actually cause you more sepsis than the other one. Because the inflammation is in the innermost part of the colon, the innermost wall, or inside the mucosal wall of the rectum. Symptoms, again, persistent diarrhea. The other one was not persistent. You just pass blood in stool and you can have a diarrhea. But this one is persistent diarrhea. And then the weird part is, after the diarrhea, you also have the urge to go back and poop. <laughs> Imagine that. And I know this feeling comes in most times when you have a GE or something, or maybe a Moeba, or a dysentery. You diarrhea yourself to no energy at all. And then immediately you're leaving the toilet, you reach the toilet door, you want to go back. There's an urge. You go and sit on that toilet, nothing is coming out. That is the same feeling that you have when you have this one. There are selective colitis. Number two, abdominal pain, left lower abdomen. Now, this one is on the other side. Remember, uh, the Crohn's disease was on the lower right abdomen or the upper right abdomen. But we said if it's on the upper right, suspect either kidney disease or the liver disease. But when it's on the lower right, then understand that is Crohn's disease. Simply start questioning on that direction. Doctors in the building, start questioning towards that direction. This other one, ulcerative colitis, you see the lower left abdomen. You know, he, kunashida. Kunashida kubwa. And then, of course, rectal bleeding. And blood is very fresh in stool. Why? Because it's in the rectum. Another one, urgency to defecate. We've talked about that. And then weight loss and fatigue. The same, same symptoms as the other one. Very slight changes.